Hello, hello, and welcome to a little video about target 4A. Let's get started. All right, so first we have our explicit geometric formula. Now, in this explicit formula, A1 represents our first term. That means whatever number comes first in the string of numbers that were given in that pattern. R is our ratio, which is also known as the constant multiplier. And I know this sounds silly, but that ends up being the number that we're constantly multiplying by. All right, function form. In function form, we do have an A, but this A represents the y-intercept. And let me remind you that a y-intercept always has an x as 0, and then in this case, A ends up being your y-intercept. And um, this is also the starting point in practical applications. R is the same as before. It's our ratio slash constant multiplier. Okay. Now what we're going to do for number one is we're going to take this sequence and we're going to write it in explicit form. All right, let's get started. For explicit form, we need two things. We need our first term and we need our ratio. The first term that we have is two. And you can see it right there. And then to find our ratio, what we're going to do is we're going to do second term divided by first. Now, some people might be able to see it right away, what the ratio, what the multiplier is, but not everyone is there. So I wanted to make sure to show you the math that goes into it. All right, once we're done dividing, 20 divided by 2 gives us 10. So our explicit form is 2, parenthesis, 10 to the power of n minus 1. And that's that. Onwards we go to letter B. So same thing, we need to find our first term. So that's 3. And to find our ratio, we're going to take second term, divide it by our first, and we get negative 2. So our final answer is 3 parentheses. Whoops. That is not what I meant to. I just deleted my highlighter. Boo. Okay, there we go. And we're going to have three parentheses, negative two to the power of n minus one. Now, the n minus one kind of hangs out there in case I wanted to ask you what the fifth or seventh or 21st term is. That's when we'd use n and we'd plug stuff in there. All right, let's do the same thing for letter D. There we go. All right. Oh, wait, letter C first, of course. So our first term is 4. Our ratio we find by doing our second term divided by our first, which we get negative 5. So our explicit form is 4 parentheses negative 5 to the power of n minus 1. Let's try letter D. Our first term is 3. And our ratio we find by doing 12, our second term, divided by 3, our first term. So it's 4. Our explicit form becomes 3 times 4 to the power of n minus 1. So not too bad. What we're going to do next is we're going to take these explicit forms and we're going to rewrite it as function forms. Now for a function, what we need is a and r. Now, from our explicit formula, we can easily determine R, and that's going to be the 2. It's, it's whatever has the, the base of our what the base of the exponent is. So there's the 2. Now, in order to find A, what we're going to do is we're going to plug 0 into M. Because, to remind you, A is our y-intercept, where 0 is our x, and then A is whatever number it is. So let's find A by plugging 0 into N. Um, I highly recommend using a calculator for this. I'm writing this little caret because that's the symbol that we see on our calculator. So you type in negative 40, parenthesis, 2, close parenthesis. Make sure your little caret is outside of the parentheses, 0 minus 1. You should get negative 20. Now, our function form is negative 20, parentheses, 2, to the power of x. 
Now we can use this form to properly graph our um, explicit formula. Let's do the same in number three. All right, so we need A and we need R. Luckily for us, R is easy to see. It's one fourth. To find A, we are going to plug zero into N. Now, once you plug that into your calculator, your answer should be 20. So our function form becomes 20 parentheses one fourth to the power of X. Now, typing in one fourth into your calculator, just to remind you, there's a button next to nine that pops up a blank fra fraction form, but you also can write it as one divided by four. That's a totally okay way to do it. Just make sure it's in parentheses. All right, let's do number four. Same idea, identify the ratio, one third. And let's plug it in. Now be very careful, make sure that negative is there. You should get negative 18. So our formula is negative 18, parentheses, one third, raised to the power of x. Finally, let's do number five. Our ratio is one tenth. And to find A, we are going to do 11 times one tenth to the power of zero minus one. And you should get 110. If you're not getting these numbers when you're entering them into your calculator, please come ask me or your teacher about it because that's important. To be able to use our technology correctly is important, especially because, sure, you do have a phone in your pocket that can do all this math, but on a test, you can't use your phone. So we need to know how to use these calculators. All right, so our final answer is 110 times 1 tenth to the power of x. Okay, let's continue to the next page of our notes. In number five, I know there's two fives, that was an oops. Um, we're going to compare these two functions and we are going to say which has a greater constant multiplier. I wanna remind you the constant multiplier is your R, your ratio. Now it's very easy to see your constant multiplier in function B. It's right there, R equals two. So this is part of you showing your work. Right? You're identifying. This is the explain your reasoning part of the question. You're saying R equals 2. Now, in order to find the ratio in function A, what we're going to do is kind of follow the same procedure we did in number 1. We're going to divide. We're going to divide for, uh, the second term divided by the first term. And, of course, let me make sure I color code it. There we go. Beautimus. Uh, 1 divided by 0 0.25 gives you 4, so still you're showing your work. And then finally, let's decide what's greater, 4 or 2. 4 is greater, function A has the greatest common multiplier. So showing me this work is explaining your reasoning. So let's do that for number 6. Function B has a constant multiplier of 6. Function A, let's calculate it. 4 divided by 4 fifths gives me 5. So 5 is the ratio for function A, 6 for function B. Function B has the greater constant multiplier. Number 7, function B has a constant multiplier of 2. Function A, let's find it by doing 2 divided by 2 thirds. I get three. Three is in fact greater than two. Function A has the greatest common multiplier. And finally, number eight, function B has a constant multiplier of three. Let's calculate this ratio, also known as the constant multiplier, by doing four divided by four thirds for function A, and I actually get three as well. In this case, they are equivalent because they both have the same constant multiplier. And I gotta say, that's that for target 4A. If you have any questions, please feel free to reach out to either myself or to your teachers and ask them. 
Have a wonderful rest of whatever day it is for you. Bye!